Welcome back, Shalligators. Adam Levine, right? Adam Levine is the lead singer of Maroon 5, perennial hot guy, overly tattooed Jewish man, married to a literal Victoria's Secret model. Not, that's not hyperbole. She is a Victoria's Secret model named Bahati Prinsloo, who seems, well, I know some things about her. She's actually a bit of a bitch. Anyway, he's been cheating on her. Not just once, not just twice, but thrice, perhaps more. Things are coming out from IG models. I use the word models in quotes because I think we all know these people aren't models. They can be influencers. You might be an influencer. Are you a model? I don't know. Anyway, these girls on IG, suddenly it's receipt after receipt after receipt that Adam has been not just only up in people's DMs saying incredibly inappropriate things, pretending he's separated from his wife. I mean, fuck, I'm surprised he didn't say she was dead because I, I do know guys who've said that. It's, it's such a dateline waiting to happen. It's so twisted. But you know, what the fuck? I feel like this whole video could literally just me be sitting here and going, trash, trash. I can't even associate, trash. And you know what? I'm not talking about the side chicks. I'm talking about Adam Levine. And apparently you guys are too, because I asked you on my Instagram, what's the topic here? And overwhelmingly, the word that kept coming up was audacity the audacity of this man to cheat on a Victoria's Secret model. And that's what you guys kept saying. Like, if a man's gonna cheat on one of the most beautiful women in the world, <laughs> are we not all just fucked? Are we all fucked? Why do guys do this? I'm gonna tell you what makes a man cheat. And we've talked a little bit about this before. Well, a lot with Chloe and Tristan. How to as much as possible, cheat proof your relationship. And I'm going to give it to you real deal. You might not want to hear what I have to say. Okay. Cause it involves sacrifice. And I'm going to talk about the larger question you guys had, which is like, why don't men like this just get divorced? Just leave, just leave. You know, like this isn't the medieval era. You can leave your wife. Why stay with a woman you don't want to be with and double down and keep having kids? Because the reason this whole thing came tumbling out, this Instagram model, Sumner Stroh, said that Adam, after not being in touch for months following their year-long affair, we're going to unpack all of this. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Because I have things to say about her too. Don't you worry. DM turn was like, hey, um, I'm having another baby. And I think it's very interesting. He wasn't like my wife. Like he's not involved. It's like, I'm having another baby. It's hatching out of a pod. I'm pulling it out of the ground like a rutabaga. I'm having another baby. If it's a boy, I want to name it Sumner. Would that be weird? I'm dead serious. And she was like, oh. Now this chick Sumner also claims that the reason she's coming out with this is because one of her friends was going to sell the screenshots of all these affairs. Cause you know, you screenshot things, you text it to your friend, who wouldn't? Adam Levine's in your DMs, you're sucking his dick, you're not gonna tell anyone about it? I'd tell the whole wide world. So if you're married, don't come after me cause I'm a big blabbermouth. That her friend was gonna sell it to the tabloids and she felt like she had to get out in front of it. Do I believe that? We're gonna break it down. I'm, there's a little more than meets the eye to this story and there's more than meets the eye to Adam's behavior. So we're gonna get into it, but before we do, some exciting announcements. We have a new Shalligator getaway to Mexico. We are going to Cancun next February. It's gonna be so fun. It's gonna be equal parts relaxing and party. We're gonna snorkel. We're gonna have like a salsa dance class, a cooking lesson. Picture like the best bachelorette party, but there's no douchey bride and you all have to wear dumb outfits. It's just like, we all get to be the bride. So it's gonna be so, so, so much fun. Also, you guys might have heard me parrot advice or mention my manifestation coach. Her name is Laura St. John. She is, she has truly done more for me in one private coaching session with her, one, than years of therapy. You, I'm not kidding you. She is like a mindset witch. And we're doing an Instagram live Wednesday, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern time, if I have that math right. We're gonna be on 
Instagram. And the best part is she launches these um, group coaching sessions. I'm going to be doing the next session. I've done one before, but I need a refresher. And tomorrow on the IG Live, we're gonna talk about how to manifest something that feels impossible. Like how do you manifest true love if you've never known love? How do you manifest money if you grew up poor? Like how do you unblock yourself to let this in? And she's got some really good answers and they're all really like easy and actionable. But also follow her on TikTok because she's great. Okay, so this large breasted pretty girl named Sumner released a TikTok <clears throat> with like basically receipts and said she had a year long affair with Adam. So Adam has released a statement, Trish. I used poor judgment in speaking with anyone other than my wife in any kind of flirtatious manner. I did not have an affair. Nevertheless, I crossed the line during a regrettable period of my life. In certain instances, it became inappropriate. I have addressed that and taken proactive steps to remedy this with my family. Proactive? This isn't proactive, this is reactive. Do you understand? What you were literally the proactive spokesperson and you don't even know what the word proactive means? Ah. My wife and family is all I care about. It should be are. My wife and family are all I, you know how the grammar, I just. <clears throat> my wife and family is, he went to UCLA. You should know is all I care about in this world. To be this naive and stupid, to be this naive and stupid enough to risk the only thing that truly matters to me is the greatest mistake I could ever make. I will never make it again. I take full responsibility. We will get through it and we will get through it together. You do not take full responsibility. You are lying. You are lying and pretending you have not fucked these girls. You might not have fucked Sumner Stroh. Like, I don't know. She said she had a year long affair. Maybe she does just mean talking, you know, like, but he's fucked somebody. Like, she was not the only girl he was talking to. Like, that's that's not how cheating works. That's not how this kind of like, like net fishing works. This like trawling fish. He's casting out a million DMs, a million this and that. Like, come on. He's flirting at bars. He's doing all of this stuff. Give me a break. And you know, honestly, I think it's I think it's so much worse and more hurtful to find out someone had an emotional connection than, than a sexual one. But you know what? Studies show that like men are different. I'll t let me explain this. Studies show that men cannot forgive a sexual cheating when their wife sexually cheats because from a caveman standpoint, now they can't be sure that their children are their children. Yeah. Women, however, cannot forgive an emotional affair. Like that's so much worse than a physical affair because now we can't be sure that this that the father of our children will actually stick around and raise them. It's interesting how it all kind of circles back to that caveman mentality. But you know, it's fucked up because then both both sexes, um, I'm sorry, aren't there like 75,000 sexes by now? We're just gonna focus on the two that, you know, Mother Nature created, an innie or an outie. It's fucked up because women are like, it was just sex, it didn't, you know, like I just, okay, like I slept with my coworker, it's not like I care about him, and the guy's like, Aah! You know, but guys say the opposite. They're like, honey, like we never actually crossed the line. Adam Levine, I never crossed the line. Like that's worse for Bahati. That's worse. Because when I like, when I had my ex-boyfriend cheat on me, not singular, the most plural plurals, so many times. And like, I found out about one. And like I said, it's like cockroaches. And it's like, blah, they all come tumbling out. What fucked me up was not like them having sex. It was the vibes. It was him getting excited when his phone would chime and it was her. You know, like I was thinking about that or like, I can't, I honestly can't even talk about it. Like it will make me throw up and cry at the same time. Like it is sickening. It is sickening. So when he says he didn't cross the line, you absolutely crossed it. You laid across that line. Like the vibes are so hurtful. They're so hurtful. Even just like, even if I know like I date someone and they like kiss some chick at a bar, like that hurts me. Imagining them like seeing each other and like, ooh, looking her up and down and like, should I go over and is she gonna come over to me? Like, that's what fucks me up. Get a prostitute, get a prostitute, get a prostitute. I don't care if you sleep with a whore. You're not like, ooh, does she like me? I don't care if she likes me. I'm not paying her even to have sex with me. I'm paying her to leave when it's over. That's what are you paying a hooker for? Not to fuck you, to leave. Like a stripper, you know, like I, that would not hurt me. 
the way flirting, like a work wife, you know, those, that's what just, that's what gets down there. I want to talk more about Sumner. I want to break this down a little bit more because she definitely painted herself, speaking and playing the pity card to be malleable, as she used the word naive, manipulated. Now look, Adam Levine is 43, she's 23. That's about the age split. It might be off by a few years, but so let's say she was 22 when this went down. Like, yeah, that's very young, huge difference in terms of life experience, huge difference in terms of, of everything. Like, I get that, like, okay, you can paint yourself as naive, manipulated, okay, because he, she did come out with a part two of this saying that um, he told her that the wife was separated, you know, and yeah, given you're in a big like public persona, that might not be news that's broken yet. And there's a reason that's not super public. And certainly if we're dealing with guys who aren't famous, it's like, well, I don't know. Like, are you separated? I'm, I'm Unless I'm driving by your house and like peering in during dinner time, like, I don't know. You believe what people tell you. You believe what people tell you. I do not though in any way really see Sumner as the victim here. I think the reason people are lashing out at her is because this grates people the wrong way that she's like, you know, I was, I was the victim. Like, girl, you weren't, you weren't. The victim here is Bahati Prinsloo and their kids. Th that, that's the real and true victim. And if you're going to be a side chick, you need to accept that because you're the interloper in the relationship. I think it would have gone over maybe a little bit better. Maybe she would have gotten a little less backlash if she'd just been like, would you not have answered a DM from Adam Levine? Would you not have met up with him? I mean, you're 22. One of the biggest rock stars in the world is like, you're unreal beautiful. I can't, I'm obsessed with you. Like, hello? A normal guy. You're like, huh? Like you just bask in that flattery. A famous one? I mean, I think that that's very relatable. Like who would not succumb to this, you know? So I hope she veers away from this. I'm the victim narrative because, uh, girl, I don't know. I don't know. Also, listen, we have to be real about our public persona. Like if you're out here being super sexy on, on Instagram, it's hard to then pivot to be like, me? I don't know anything about men. and What's a sex? I understand that that's painting with too broad of a stroke. I, I get that, but that is how people, that is what public perception does. That is mob mentality. You know, you're not a librarian. You don't work at spirit Halloween. Like you are out there. You're very public. You're very attention seeking. You're very sexual. Kind of does what it says on the tin. But again, this isn't her deal. This wasn't Sumner's role to protect someone else's marriage. I'm internet friends with uh, IG Famous by Dana. Hi, Dana. She's fantastic. She's been releasing a lot of receipts from other girls that have been sending her stuff about Adam. And Dana is also friends. She's internet friends with Sumner. But Dana called it, she said it exactly right. She's like, the only person who is tasked with protecting a marriage is the person who's married. We cannot expect random women out there to prioritize our relationships over their own happiness or even excitement. That's ridiculous. But you know what? That's the age we are living in right now. Where like, but I have a peanut allergy. Sounds like a you problem, dude. When I threw my homecoming party this weekend, like I had told all my neighbors, I put it on the Facebook page. I gave out little treats with little cards. Sorry for party rocking. I said the DJ was going to be done by 1030. 1030. This short fucking King Summer comes over talking to my dude who's like 6'2". He's like, I want to speak to the owner. And he's like, you're not speaking to the owner. You can speak to me. Daddy. And he's like, I have to work at 3.30 in the morning. And he's like, that's your problem. Like, that is not the world's problem. Your triggers are your issues. Your relationships are your issues. Your schedule is your issue. We are living in this golden age of outsourcing the responsibility for our lives to other people. No one gives a shit about your boyfriend's commitments to you or your husband and your vows. Stop acting like women are going to respect the fact that a man made a commitment to you. They don't. It's a cold world and this is the law of the jungle. You know, I don't date dudes with boyfriends or, well, I don't date dudes with boyfriends, <laughs> girlfriends or wives, not because, oh, like I respect, I don't, I, I mean, I don't. Like that's, if it's between your commitments and what I want, is gonna be what I want. 
Like, sorry, wife, you mean nothing to me. Girl code, fuck out of here. I want what I want and I am like a steamroller. When I lock onto something I want, you just, you can't stop me. You better just hope we want the same things. Cause if not, I'll roll the fuck over you. But I don't date dudes like that. Not because again, like, oh, I've got the respect and the sanctity. It's because it's not worth it. It's not worth the heartache. It's not worth being the side chick. I value myself too highly for that. I have priorly, and I had to learn these lessons the hard way, and it sucks. And you know, these girls on IG dealing with Adam Levine, they're going through, like, I can see myself in them. And you know, that's why I'm not shredding them or coming for them. Like, I'm shredding the dude. Like, he's the manipulative one. And listen, I've been a cheater also, and I was the manipulative one. It wasn't, oh, somebody was just coming at me so hard I couldn't resist. Of course I could have resisted. I didn't want to. At the end of the day, I didn't want to. And I was using very much the same rhetoric that Adam Levine was using. And this wasn't my marriage. I didn't know. This was like in college, you know, like I was very, I was young. I was stupid and I was immoral. I've grown more into my morality. And, you know, I was painting my boyfriend at the time. He doesn't understand me. He's just not here for me. No one who's cheating is painting their partner who's sitting at home like none the wiser. No one is like, oh no, she's great. She's an amazing wife, amazing mom. I love her. She's always trying to suck my dick. She's so supportive, but I really just want to sleep with someone else. You will never hear that. You will never hear that story. You will always hear a sob story. Why? Because the number one thing a manipulative person wants is pity. Makes us all very squishy and malleable. His wife doesn't understand him. He's only staying because of the kids. Doesn't that make him such a good guy? No, you wouldn't get it. It's complicated. It's not complicated. It's the oldest, simplest story in the book. He's a dick who likes having two girlfriends. What? You guys asked on IG, why don't these men just leave? My question back for you, why would they? Why would they? We as human beings, you know what we are? We're risk machines, constantly analyzing risk. It's how we have not only survived, but evolved and ascended to the top of the food chain. So a man, while he used to in the caveman days do risk assessment of that saber-toothed tiger and the winter and how much grain is stored, now he's doing risk assessment about how many blowjobs he can get from a wide variety of people. So he's asking himself, hmm, would it be easier to tell my wife, I don't love you, I want to get my dick sucked by other people, uh, 50% custody of the kids, alimony, big public court case, moving the stuff out, that sounds like a lot of work. And I know that's going to be a really difficult outcome. Or I could risk it and screw around on the side and maybe that will be the outcome. But if, I, if I'm if i upfront with her, that's 100% the outcome. But if I fuck around on the side, it's maybe 25% the outcome, maybe 50. Even if it's 75%, that's less than 100. You have to look at these behaviors from a risk analysis, also from a potential blowjob analysis machine. And then suddenly it makes so much more sense. People, by and large, they don't do the hard right thing. They do something that's potentially harder in the long run. Like this is worse for Adam Levine in the long run for sure because he bet wrong. He risked wrong. But people are going to do the thing that is easier and feels better in the short term. And that is almost always going to be cheating over being super honest with your partner and losing them. Because the sad truth is, This doesn't mean that he doesn't love his wife. It doesn't mean that. It means he wants strange. Ugh, I know. What is strange? To be vulgar and blunt, strange pussy. Something different. No matter how much you love your favorite meal, you want to eat it three times a day for the rest of your life? I don't. It will turn something you love into something that's like you again, this again. Ah! People love novelty. They love discovery. They love a hunt. Isn't that what males are hardwired to do? Hunt. They don't want to be fed all the time. They don't want the stultifying sameness of their life. And yeah, you can say like, how is his life routine and boring? He's a rock star. His wife's a model. I know. 
To us, their life is like chaotic and new and all of these things. But to them, within any life, a routine emerges. You know, within any sustainable life where people don't end up like ODing or whatever. Like seriously, a routine must emerge. And certainly these people with two kids and another on the way, there's a huge degree of routine. I mean, people don't tour randomly. It's not like... You're playing a show at MSG tonight. I am? Like, no, you plan a tour. There's a routine to that. There's a modeling season. There's fashion week. There's photo shoots. Like, there, from, from chaos, there becomes order. There becomes predictability. And in that predictability, the foundation is laid for boredom. Boredom. Now, of course, the other aspect to this is how the fuck do you get bored of being married to one of the most beautiful women in the world? Just habit. You know this? Have you ever heard this saying? Show me the most beautiful woman in the world. I'll show you the guy that's tired of fucking her. Even beautiful things become routine when you see them all the time. Beauty is based on scarcity. Attraction is based on novelty. And when you lose that, again, you, you prime the pump for all this boredom and therefore cheating. And here's the part that I said you guys are not going to like. Kids put this shit into hyperdrive. They accelerate this to the point where like I'm not going I'm not going to say it's inevitable. I I don't want to say that. I just think it creates an environment that is so rife with possibility for cheating because having a kid is so difficult. We've talked before about the most I have told you before that the number one time a man is most likely to cheat is when his wife or partner is pregnant it's disgusting but hold on hold on hold on let's wind this back let's look at this not through the lens of risk or anything like that but through the lens of how men look at the world which is ego ego Sense of identity, sense of self, sense of importance in the world. That's what ego comes down to. Sorry I keep like drawing these big breaths. I feel like I'm getting an asthma attack today. I'm like, (gasps) anyway. What is happening when a woman is pregnant? Her focus is shifting. Her body focus is shifting, you know? Everything about her is suddenly tunnel vision oriented to this baby. And there's this phrase that like a woman becomes a mom when she gets pregnant. A man doesn't become a father until the baby is born. And you get it, like it's not happening inside his body. Like people aren't patting his tummy. And that's the thing, people are focusing on her. She's focusing on herself and this baby. And he's like, kind of persona non grata. It's like, oh, you couldn't put the fucking crib together, Jordan? Great. No, I, no, that's, that's fine. I'm growing this baby. You can't put an Ikea crib together. I'm just making sure that I got this right. Suddenly, his productivity is much more important. Suddenly, his efficiency, what he can do as a man, huge, huge. And her metric for his success as a husband and a partner is overnight has changed. Overnight has changed. He's the fun guy. Oh my gosh, he's so fun. I don't fucking care if he's fun. Can he install that car seat? Great. You know? And so what that does to a man is he feels left out in the cold. He feels impotent. He feels useless many times. You know, this, the playbook has changed. The goalpost has moved and she's not paying attention to him anymore. There's a new sheriff in town and it's that baby. And it is always going to be like that. There is now a third party in this relationship. And we've talked about third parties in relationships before, not cheating, but like, You know, we bring up the concept or if we think about like sister wives, plural marriage, and people are like, oh, like, oh, can you, what a toxic thing for a marriage. How is a baby better? It's a third party. Only a sister wife, she might be bringing resources, labor division. She's helping with things. She's got something else to talk about. This baby, take, 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 take. So looking at it through that lens, how is a man going to look at a baby? You're taking things from me. I used to have all the attention and now you're here and I don't really know how to deal with you and like, yeah, I've welcomed you into this, but this is difficult for me. Isn't that how a woman would look at a sister wife? (gasps) They're not so different. They're not so different. So look at how a woman would look at a sister wife and then try to template that a little bit 
on how a man might potentially look at a child. Now, of course, you're going to add in the layer of love and this is his heir and bone, rib of my body, whatever the fuck the saying is. I don't even know. And so, of course, that's, I'm not saying that all men look at a baby as a threat. Dr. Freud thought so. But there is an element of that. It is a logistical reality that this baby is taking up resources. It's taking up my wife's attention, time. It's changed her body. She doesn't want to be touched. Her vagina feels different. Like these are realities and we can try to act like they aren't. And in comes women like Sumner Strout. In come these other I girls, IG girls, not because they're these like horrible harpies and predators, but because they are offering what the wife used to, which was attention and adoration and focus and novelty that now the wife cannot. Not because there's something wrong with the wife. This is the cycle. You know, guys get married like, yes, let's have a baby, let's have a family. And then they're like, I'm gonna be honest with you right now about something. I'm gonna be honest with you about something. I had a married man all up in my pieces recently. All up in my pieces. And he had a baby that was six weeks old. (laughs) This was not bait that I took, you know, this is, I told you, this is not what I'm into. This is not what I'm into. But I was asking questions because I, I wanted to gain clarity about this. You know, I wanted something to like be able to tell you guys. And to his credit, credit, he, he only had wonderful things to say about his wife. He was the outlier guy who was like, no, she's fantastic. You know, like she's great, but like real, really, I don't get enough attention. I don't get enough attention. And that's what I was like, I am not your emotional fidget spinner. And he literally, literally had said to me, I don't want to have to owe you a text back or anything or like be there for you to me. But if you're in town, if you're in my city, I would love to fuck you. I said, everyone in your city would love to fuck me. You are not special. You are offering me nothing. Okay? And he's like, well, I'm just being honest. Don't I get points for honesty? Do you know? I dealt with this with a guy recently. And I go back to that Taylor Swift line, so casually cruel in the name of being honest. And one of my best friends, Kelly, I was just telling her about this, not, not the married dude, but this other dude who was like casually cruel, like, but I'm, I'm being honest. And she's like, you don't want an honest man. You want a good man. You want a good man. And sometimes those are one and the same. Very often they're not. Do we want honesty 24 hours a day? No, you actually do look quite fat in that dress. Okay. I'm actually talking about this more in the Chalantrage. It's our little like members only clubhouse because I do a series Every Monday, I do Evil Monday, and I'm doing a series called School of Lies about why lying is important and how to be a really good liar. And after that, you know what's coming? School of Cheats. So basically, it's like Evil Week stretched out into every single Monday. It's great. And you also get things like Wisdom Wednesday, where I do like long form dives, bonus videos, Serene Sunday, Slutty Saturday, Fuck Boy Friday. So there's a whole bunch of good stuff over there, plus a bunch of group chats. The link's down in the bio if you want to save 25%. Anyway, didn't mean to segue, but... It, it made me think because exactly that, like when I was thinking about like, I don't want an honest man, I want a good man. I want a man who's maybe gonna be like protecting me from the God's honest truth. I don't wanna ever have to talk to you when you need someone, but I definitely want access to your vagina. Like, do you think, I'm gonna be like, wow, <laughs> he's so honest. And I was like, that is an audacious thing to say. That is ridiculous considering you have not one thing to offer me. Not one. So what's in this for me? Not consistent attention, obviously not commitment, not a future, but you will allow me to have sex with you when I fly out to see you. Are you on drugs? Okay, just, I'm gonna, I gotta gather my thoughts. So something you guys asked on the Instagram feedback was like, what are the signs? Like, what what are the signs 
that someone lacks integrity like this? Or what are the signs of a cheater? Like, should Bahati have known this? Well, there's some rumors that Bahati was the side chick because he was dating. Adam Levine has dated, like, he's just called a Victoria's Secret and is like, send five more. He's like Leo DiCaprio. He's run through, like, the whole VS squad starting lineup. He dated Anne V and somebody else. And I heard he had a fling with Jessica Simpson. And, I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot. He's not just dated, like, normal chicks. And some, one of you guys commented, wasn't it a huge red flag? He was attending every Victoria's Secret fashion show, supporting a different model every time. Huh. Let's unpack that. Now, look, you might not be a Victoria's Secret model. You might not date a guy who only dates VS models. But I think it's a red flag if you date a man who has one rigid type. I see this especially in my friends who are Asian because they are the first ones to say, oh, I never date a guy who only dates Asian chicks. They're exoticizers. And they have this concept of what Asian women are like. And yo, and it's usually like meek, like, ha oh, ha you're like football player. You know, like this is like what these dumb fucking men think Asian girls are like. My Asian friends are weapons. They're like titans of industry. Like you're looking for a submissive. You're not going to find it here. But it's true. Like, if men are dating based on this, like, very shallow, phys physical, visual, categorical archetype, I only date Asians. I only date models. I only want girls who lift. Do you hear this shit all the time? In Montana, like, looking for chicks who lift. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, Tyson. <sighs> when they're that rigid, I think... It's a huge sign of a lack of complexity and therefore a lack of maturity. Like you don't actually see shades of gray in women. You see women as a chick who lifts or a chick who doesn't. Like that's, those are the only two categories women can be in. Okay. Like you, it's like, she's the slut. She's the good girl. She's Asian. She's not Asian. There's only two kinds, right? Actual women, as we know, can be slutty and good. We can lift and we can not lift. Like it's just... When I see a guy who only has like, who has a very specific type, I'm like, you're probably not gonna like me because I'm a million different people at once. And so are most of you. Almost all alpha females are, you know? So that's a huge red flag, huge red flag. Why, why does this lead to cheating? Because he's not actually valuing you. He's valuing how well you fit into that seat how well you hit that mark, how well you check that box. She's the Asianest Asian that I've ever seen. Hmm. She's the number one model at this show. Hmm. And yeah, some of the things that are coming out about Adam, it's like he's a dick to waiters. Like he's just, he's, he's of that ilk where he's going to talk down to people. Again, to me, this hints at slotting people into categories. Oh, you don't deserve to be sp spoken to with respect because you work at Cinnabon at the airport. So I can talk to you however I want because you are fundamentally beneath me. They have a caste system mentality. And if they do have that caste mentality, if you think that doesn't extend to you, oh, girl, you're wrong. Somebody said to me one time, I always pay attention to how a man treats a waiter or a waitress on a date because eventually, six months from now, that's exactly how he's going to treat me. Short-tempered, what are you going to do for me? Like, he might just be on his best behavior right now, but it cracks when he thinks he can get away with whatever he wants, when he thinks he's entitled, and this, this person is somehow owned by him. And that's really, really true. So look, you want to look for two metrics that someone might cheat on you? Do they categorize other people? Is there a fundamental lack of complexity and, and nuance when they're looking at others? What do we call that? Narcissism. That is one of the hallmarks of narcissism. Is that everyone's a character in my play. Now we all to a degree think that. You know, it's our world. Uh, but we can pause, step outside our own ego and say like, no, like my neighbor over there, like he's the star of his play and I'm a minor character, you know, but I'm the star of mine and he's a minor character of mine. Narcissists will act like they know that. They're, mm -hmm. No, I know that you have your feeling. No, I know. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. But they don't, they don't really believe that. <laughs> they don't really believe that. They don't. Everything really actually is about them. And other people who have their lives and feelings must be in some sense kidding. 
So you got to take a step back and really, really look at that. I mean, or don't and be the Bahati. This is something that one of you guys pointed out. Sumner gloated about how he chose her over a Victoria's Secret model. It's proven that men become more desirable to women if they have hot female partners. So it seems to me that this is more about female competition, like Sumner versus Bahati, than about Adam. This is the Emily Ratajkowski effect that like I have always heard her like disgusting, drooling underbite of a soon to be ex-husband, whatever his fucking name is, would cheat on her and would like brag be like I can get so many like hotter chicks now that I married Emily because like girls want to think like I chose her over Emily Ratajkowski like I am more desirable than this like perfection creature there's women like that out there another thing why do women assume that being a supermodel prevents their man from cheating because holy shit shouldn't it I mean Beauty is such, beauty and thinness is such a prize. It, I won't even say in our culture, in every culture. Nobody is like, yay, ugly. They might have a, a beauty standard that we, in our point of view, consider ugly. But to them, like, no, that's beauty. Like, you know, beauty is beauty. And we think like, okay, if we chase this, this is so important. If we achieve this, my God, it's got to have a good outcome. Like this has got to insulate us from something. We are constantly oh, risk machines. It all comes back. It all comes back. We're a risk machine. What can I do to make the concept of this man cheating and me getting eaten by the saber tooth tiger and not surviving the winter and our offspring dying? What can I do to lessen that risk? We're not consciously saying this to ourselves. But underneath the surface, instantaneously, these are the calculations going on from our caveman brain. Can you blame us? Can you blame us for wanting to insulate ourselves from pain, from the destruction of everything we know about our life? It's unbearable to think, <laughs> I can't really sleep well at night because I have no idea if my tomorrow is going to be any good. I don't know if this man is going to stay. I don't know if there's going to be someone around to raise this offspring that now I'm responsible for financially, physically, you know? So if we can get those breast implants, get the Botox, puff up our lips, hit our angles, surely, surely this counts for something, right? <laughs> Right? Let me tell you. Last year, at this time, I was starting, I hate to use the word journey, but I was kicking off my weight loss. I was, you know, losing weight. I was not drinking. And I was doing those things for risk assessment. If I stop drinking, I'm going to have better relationships with boys. I'm going to find true love. Like, you're not going to find a dude at 2 a.m. at the bar. Like, that's, that's not where true love happens, right? And God knows if I'm like, mm, if this look is eating, if I am thin and hot and sexy, well, come on. So I'm going to get hot to attract the guy, but I'm going to keep him by being sober and like conscientious and self-aware and blah, blah, blah. L-O-L. I've never been more single in my life. You know, like, yeah, I'm like seeing some people, but like, no, I'm like, no. Uh-uh, I was getting laid way more last summer, way more last summer. So I learned, it's like, wait, wait, I'm so sorry. I dropped almost 45 pounds and I don't drink. I suffer through like, bleh, like the boring brunches or whatever, just raw dogging life. And the risk analysis spit out the wrong answer. I'm not actually getting a better return on investment. What the fuck? Seriously? Yeah, dude, seriously. Because there is no one answer. Follow the Book of Mormon and you're going to find true love. Keep the perfect house and everybody's going to adore you and your friends are never going to betray you or talk shit. There is no fill in the blank. If you do X, 
you are guaranteed safety. As you define that, you can be the girl who lifts. You can win a CrossFit competition. Does that mean no one's ever gonna like hurt you or beat you up or kill you? No, it doesn't mean that. You can have all the money in the world. Does that mean you're never gonna have a bad day and everyone's gonna adore you? No, right? You can have power. You can be the richest man in the world. Does that mean you'll never die? I don't think so, Jeff. So when we look at you know, we go back to this concept and I know this got very like high level and existential, but because it is, because it kicks up stuff that is so high level and so existential for us. Like what can we do to insulate ourselves from pain, from risk? I think the answer is just not offloading that onto someone else. You know, we cannot outsource and export our sense of safety just onto somebody else. If I am this hot, he's going to love me. If we hit this amount of money in the bank, the future is secure. I mean, I don't know. I don't know that I have an answer for this. Like this is what like Socrates sat under a tree and pondered for like 30 years, right? This is, these are the big questions. These are the big questions. But I think just asking them really helps to untangle the knots, you know, just to be like, wait a minute. What do I think hitting 119 pounds, that is my goal weight, what do I think that's going to get me? How do I think my life is going to change? What do I think this will insulate me from? And once I look at that answer in the face, look at it without judgment, get curious and not furious, don't shame yourself, but ask yourself, is that realistic? Okay, if I drop five more pounds, because I want to, do I think the guy, the, some ex is going to be like, oh, Sean looks like she's lost five more pounds. I think I'm ready to love her. Like, do I honestly think that that is what guys or the universe or my friends or anybody is waiting for? You know, I can say I want to lose five more pounds because I bought a pair of pants that are a little too small and I'm going to be happy that I can fit in them and save myself, you know, losing out on 80 bucks. All right. Okay. But if you're, if you're looking at, if I do X, then these sweeping incredible changes in my life will occur. We've talked about this in terms of plastic surgery. If I get breast implants, I'm never going to be anxious again. Yeah, you will. You'll just be anxious with bigger tits. If I, you know, I'm trans and if I'm a girl, like I'll never feel insecure again. No, women are constantly insecure. Like that's also not it, you know? Like there is no magic wand and don't we fucking wish that there was. Don't we wish that there was? But there's not. But Studies have shown that there are two main reasons why people cheat. We've talked about this. To explore different sides of their personality and to feel alive. And when we think about a man cheating, he's hitting both of those. He's feeling alive. Oh, there's risk. I mean, like sexy risk. You know, there's like, yeah, she, my wife might find out but my wife might find out. You know, we're drawn to these things which we hate. It's a, it, that which nourishes us also destroys us. It's all very toxic. But it's thrilling, the thrill of the forbidden. Okay, so he's feeling alive. There's someone like new he's talking to. I'm not, like, it's a whole new pair of breasts. I've never seen these ones before. They're so squishy in a different way. But you might be like, well, different sides of his personality. Yeah, because you can reinvent yourself with somebody new. All the jokes are funny. She's never heard that story. Oh my God, where did you grow up? You named your dog Waffles when you were five? <laughs> the wife, she's like, I fucking heard it. I know, I heard about Waffles, enough. She's heard it. So how can we take some of that energy and put it into a current relationship? Well, I think in order to keep stimulating your partner's desire, you know, feeling alive and exploring different sides of their personality, you have to be doing that. You have to be doing both of those things. Are you living a life that makes you feel lit up inside and alive? Now I know there's going to be things you have to sort through cycling. The taxes have to be paid. There are going to be those elements. But when you have those free times, what are you filling it with? Are you scrolling mindlessly on your phone? Are you farting in sweatpants on the, I hate even say, I can't even say that word. I can't believe I even said it out loud. I never say that word. I never say that word. Are you doing that thing on the couch with your partner? Or are you using your free time to like start that business that just makes you feel so good about yourself or train for a marathon or a half marathon? Are you doing anything of passion in your life? Well, 
then you are, again, hyperlapsing these feelings of boredom and unaliveness. Same with exploring different sides of personality. Are you doing that for yourself? Or are you kind of a one-note bitch? Do you have one hobby, but like actually not even? Drinking wine isn't a hobby. Shopping isn't a hobby. Watching TV isn't a hobby. Do you do something to develop different sides of yourself? Are you still learning? Are you curious? Are you growing? Are you reading the articles and listening to podcasts? Like, what are you doing to stay sparky? If you're doing nothing, well, there are no neutral actions in life, are there? You're either part of a problem or you're part of a solution. So which is it going to be? Are you moving your relationship closer, more dynamic, more interesting? Or are you letting things stagnate? Go ahead, let them stagnate. There's a million Sumner Strohs out there. More than a million. And you don't have to be a rock star to cheat. It's pretty easy. Women are very aggressive. Guys don't even have to particularly go and look for it. Women are aggressive, you know? And like I said, why shouldn't they be? Why shouldn't, why should a girl care more like, oh, oh, he's got a ring, I can't. It's not her problem. She's trying to feel alive. She's trying to explore different sides of her personality. I'm just like this minx, like you can't resist me. And ooh, like I know it's dangerous, but ha ha ha, I don't care, I'm a bad girl. She's doing it. She's doing those things. Are you? Not that it's your fault if a man cheats, but it is your responsibility to create an environment that is still growth-based in a relationship. You still need to be growing as people. And look, I'm going to say, that can be tough with kids. And you wouldn't think so. On its surface, it's like, but you're constantly learning, constantly growing. Things are constantly changing. But in a stressful way that you guys aren't purposefully choosing. You know, like, you aren't choosing to have that baby start teething. That just, that just happens. You know, you're kind of along for the ride. You feel, therefore, infantilized. Ironically, you feel out of control and sort of powerless, which again is ironic because you're the parent, you have all the power, but when a, kid, when a, baby, a baby runs that, <laughs> runs that house, <laughs> you ain't running shit, the baby's running everything. The person who's willing to poop anywhere gets to run the world. <laughs> Good news for you. So it's especially important that if you have kids, you are doing things that are proactive for yourself and therefore trickle down into your relationship. But the worst possible outcome is that you are doing that and you are diversifying yourself. And you know, like when I had my ex cheating on me, he was cheating on me constantly. Like I really was doing that. Like I was pursuing this job and I was so passionate and like I had like hobbies I was trying to develop. I, I could have done more. I absolutely could have done more. But it because I was still developing as a person and I still had very much my own identity, it was easier to move on. I was like, you know what? This is a you problem. This isn't a me problem. This is a you problem. Yeah, we're on the couch in sweatpants. Never, I would never. And like, we have our quiet times and we binge and we scroll and we shop and whatever. But like, I really was plugged in and really trying to make everything as fun and exciting and lively. And like, <laughs> I'm sorry, you just need more than me. I am a lot of horsepower. So is Bahati Prinsloo, and so are you. We're probably gonna make more videos on this. And I know I promised you guys a Love is Blind video. I'm gonna be doing that. I'm gonna be doing like a bunch. It's gonna be a whole series because there's just so much to unpack. I think I'm gonna be doing it based on the couples versus based on the episodes because each couple kind of has its own like big question that I kind of anchor to it. Mm. I'm gonna drag Kyle to hell. And I'm going to drag him by that trick-ass nose ring. Prepare for 45 minutes of me talking about that. All right, Shalligators. Like I said, join me on IG Live tomorrow at 10 a.m. Shoot, I've got an event I have to cancel. Um, no, I'm sorry. 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Eastern time. IG Live with my manifestation coach, Laura St. John. She's going to give tips on how to manifest something that seems impossible like a faithful man. <laughs> We're going to get down to it. I'll see you later, alligators.